I come from Togo, and I, as you can see it on the screen, it's a very big country in West Africa. Togo is home to about 8 million people. Um, unfortunately, for the past 51 years, my country has been ruled by the same family. For almost five decades now, we have been fighting to end dictatorship in Togo. But I have good news. You're going to win. <laughs> Togo's trouble started with one man, Eadimanya Singbe. He was a very eccentric, self-centered dictator. He became president in 1963, 67, after killing our first president in 1963, Sivanus Olimpio. Eadema ruled Togo for 38 years. If you have never lived under a dictatorship, it's hard to imagine the level of cruelty of Eadema's regime. He was one of the most self-centered leaders that I've ever come across. When Eadema was president, it was actually mandatory for civil servants and citizens and students to line up and clap for him four times a day, in the morning when he goes to work, at noon when he takes his break, at 2 p.m. when he goes back to the office, and in the evening when he closes from office. And whenever he traveled, people had to line up from the airport to his presidential palace to clap for him, to welcome him. And every weekend, people had to dance for him. Um, there were dance competitions, and civil servants were mandated to practice and dance for Yadema to say how great and lucky we, ha we are to have him as president. In my first year in the university, I was a history major in Togo. We were told in our Togo ethnic course that of all the 40-plus ethnic groups in Togo, Yadema is the only one that descended from heaven. Um, in primary school, of course, we believed it, but at the university level, none of us refused to believe that, but the teacher <laughs> is not stupid to say otherwise, because the Adema wanted to portray himself as a living God. So even in the university, we were told that he descended from heaven. Um, you know, anyone who challenged a Yadema will face the full wrath of his soldiers. He had one of the most repressive armies in the history of Togo. People will disappear and their bodies will be found at the beach. Many people were never found. Some people who were lucky to have survived the torture of his soldiers did with severe injuries and many people were disabled for life. In 1985, one of the multiple times that my father was arrested as an activist, in Togo, he had to share his prison cell with 32 different inmates. They had to take turns to sleep. Some will stand while others will sleep. They were only allowed to shower once every two months. And every morning, they served them a breakfast. And that breakfast was made of 75 lashes. Unfortunately, the prison and detention conditions in Togo have not changed till day. And we still have comrades in prison that are living in some of the most horrendous conditions. Amnesty International said that Togo's prisons can be compared to a living hell. In 2005, one beautiful morning of February 5th, we were told that Yadema died. For all of us, it was a relief. He died in a plane. Of course, he went back to heaven. <laughs> um, he was traveling to Israel for medical treatment because for the 38 years he was in power, he was not you know, smart enough to build a good hospital but he couldn't make it. On that same evening, his son, who was a minister, did a coup d'etat, and he appointed himself as president. Of course, the people of Togo wouldn't take that. He received a lot of pressure. He organized elections two months later, and we had some of the most interesting elections in Togo. In 2005, soldiers went to each polling station in the country to beat protesters, and they stole the ballots, and they declared Fonya Simbe president. That's how he will become the elected dictator of Togo. And for the past 13 years, he has been in power. In 2005, the soldiers of Togo killed at least 400 citizens within a week, according to the United Nations. But for a country of five million people back in the days, that's like 30,000 Americans getting killed for one man to become president. Even though I had gained consciousness about the situation in Togo at an earlier age because of my father being an activist, 
It was at that moment that I really pledged to do whatever possible to end dictatorship in Togo, no matter what the cost would be for me. When Fonya Simbe became president, he had the full support of the government of France because Togo was a former French colony. Eyadema himself was a soldier in the French colonial army. And the president of France, then Jacques Chirac, said upon his death that in Eyadema, France has lost a great friend and him a personal friend. So the government of France did everything to protect his son and assure that he takes over smoothly. And the hundreds of my countrymen that were killed, now accountability was um, followed up. But for us, the people of Togo, we realized that if we wanted freedom, if we wanted to liberate our country from dictatorship, then we are on our own and we have to fight ourselves. In 2011, I founded the Farmers Go movement with a few friends. I was the youngest, but they trusted me with leadership. They said that I was crazy enough to be able to say something like this, four months ago, and I was the only known face of the movement for many years. They'll call us cyber terrorists. The only tools that we had were our cell phones and our computers. I remember saying one day in one of my videos that when the government shoots, they hit one person at a time with their bullet. But when we shoot a video, we reach millions of people at a time. For those of us who believe in freedom, we'll always outnumber them. And we believe that with technology, we can defeat them. One day, I published the cell phone numbers of all the members of parliament in Togo and asked people to call them and ask why they had refused to reinstate term limits. I called the majority leader of the ruling party the conversation started very nicely, and as soon as I said, sir, I would like to know why we refuse to vote for term limits, his answer was, you're stupid, you're foolish, you're crazy, and then he hung up on me. Well, knowing how nice they are, I recorded a conversation, I posted it online, went viral, <laughs> and in the following days, hundreds of Togolese people kept calling them. They organized an extraordinary session at the parliament to complain about how one very useless girl posted their information online and for how many days now they were not able to sleep. They were really angry. But for those of us, it was a victory because for once in our life, we had the ability and the opportunity to ask our leaders questions and to hold them accountable for an act that they have posed. Last year, the long-awaited momentum that we have been fighting for finally came when a political party called for a protest demanding the reinstatement of term limits, and the government, of course, responded with brutality and killed many citizens. Then we came as leaders of civil society, organizations and movements, put pressure on the opposition, asked them to form a unified front so that we finish with this struggle once and for all and we demand change in Togo we will go ahead and mobilize hundreds of thousands of people. The government responded by shutting down the internet and telephone services. They brutalized people. Soldiers went home to home, beating citizens and killing people. As this nine years old that was shot dead in October last year. But for many weeks, the numbers kept growing. The people of Togo have been fighting for so many decades for change. But because we are one small country in West Africa that speaks French that half of the world population will probably never hear about, we don't make it on mainstream media. But I believe that the freedom and liberty are not privileges that a few people are born with. Rather, they are rights that all of us, each one of us, are entitled to. And in Togo, we have paid our dues to earn that freedom and liberty. Despite their, the brutality that our people are facing, militaries patrolling every single of our cities and neighborhoods, arresting people day and night and torturing citizens and sending many of us in exile, we are still fighting. The government of Togo is still benefiting from a lot of support from international organizations, institutions, and even foreign governments, including the United States governments, because they are not receiving enough pressure and there's not enough coverage to convince them into supporting the people of Togo. But for us, we are fighting with our barons, and if the world cannot help us, at least they shouldn't help our oppressors. 
So we are calling on all active forces, all the people who believe in freedom, like to stand with us and to help us defeat the oldest military regime in Africa. We believe that as citizens, our voices should be heard and matter. And I believe in a Togo where every citizen can aspire to become president without fear of retribution or death. That Togo is possible. In fact, it is probable, and you can help us achieve it. Thank you.